Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back. Today I'm covering the case of Michelle Avila. I always feel like I pronounce people's names wrong, so I am really sorry if anything is pronounced wrong. I normally find out when I'm editing that I've pronounced the whole thing wrong. I really want to say thanks to Carl for suggesting this case. He commented it on my TikTok and as soon as he commented it, I went and had a look and just knew I had to cover it. And before we get into it, I do just want to say that all the research is found on the internet and media sources. I do believe everything to be true, but it is the internet, so you know. Michelle Eva Avila was born on the 8th of February 1968 in San Fernando in Los Angeles in Los Angeles, California. Michelle also went by the name Missy, so that's how I'll refer to her in this case. Missy grew up with her mum and her three brothers, and I couldn't actually find much on her childhood, but from what I could gather, it seemed like she had a nice upbringing. At around 11, Missy started high school, and she had some of her primary school friends go in, but she also had her best friend, Karen, go in. And you know when you're just in an uncomfortable situation and your best friend is there, it's such a relief. Missy and Karen had been best friends since eight years old. They lived on the same street, so they just grew up together. They were so tight and constantly had each other's backs. And it really showed when they started high school. A lot of girls tried to bully Missy because Missy got a lot of attention from boys and it made the other girls feel threatened. The boys would try and flirt with Missy, try and get her attention and the girls just didn't like this. They would honestly bully her for this. But Missy's best friend Karen would just not have this. She would get in physical fights protecting Missy and she was known as Missy's bodyguard. But unfortunately that changed. At the age of 14 Karen fell pregnant so she had to drop out of school and become a mum. And whilst Karen was busy doing that, Missy was attending high school by herself and eventually over time they just drifted apart. As Missy and Karen had always been so tight, it was important now for Missy to branch out and socialise with more people and this is when she met a boy called Randy. Over time, Missy started dating Randy, which meant that she seen Karen even less. And this upset Karen, but her upset come out in really weird ways like when Missy broke up with Randy Karen started dating him she got in a relationship with her best friend's ex-boyfriend and not even just a fling they moved in together and had a proper relationship Karen even started rumors saying that Missy was sleeping with other people's boyfriends and this just spread like wildfire around the school and even got to Missy's mom. And although not true, this rumour caused a lot of drama for Missy. It even got her beat up by a group of girls. Karen got her alleged best friend beat up by a group of girls. Honestly, if that was me, I would feel sick with guilt. I'm not sure if Missy ever knew that it was Karen that was starting these rumours. After nine months, Karen returned back to school after having her baby and still Missy and her didn't speak too much. So Karen decided to get a new friend, Laura Doyle. Laura didn't like Missy either. So they bonded over not liking Missy, but they were fake about it. So to Missy's face, they were all nice, but behind her back, it was a completely different story. Karen was just jealous of Missy. If she wasn't starting rumours behind her back, she was bitching about her. If she wasn't bitching about her, she was sleeping with her ex. Her whole life just revolved around not liking Missy. And on the 23rd of September 1985, this all came ahead. Missy and Karen had a physical fight. I'm not sure what this was about specifically, but it was probably a whole load of things that had been going on. And allegedly, I don't want to say for sure, but some sources said that Karen even broke a bottle and threatened to hit Missy with it. And it's fair to say that after this fight, they didn't speak to each other for a while. And then around 10 days to two weeks later, Missy told her mum that she's going out. When Missy's mum asked who she's going out with, Missy replied that she's going out with a girl called Laura Doyle. And she's the one we mentioned earlier that hung out with Karen and didn't really like Missy. So her mum said okay and let her go around 3.30 with the promise that Missy will call her mum at 8 o'clock. Missy accepted and then Laura came to pick Missy up in the car and then they drove off. And then around four hours later, Laura called Missy's house and her mum answered. Laura asked to speak to Missy and as you can imagine, Missy's mum was so confused. 
She thought her daughter was out with Laura, so why is she calling asking where she is? So of course she asked where her daughter is, when Laura replied that she was with Missy and they went to a random park. There were three boys there in a blue Camaro and she dropped Missy off and said that she's going to get petrol but she's going to come back. She went to go get petrol and then on her way back she went to pick Missy up. But Missy wasn't there and neither were the three boys who were driving the blue Camaro. So now Missy's mom, Irene, was so confused and extremely worried. The last sightings of her daughter was with three male strangers in a park and it was highly likely that they'd driven off in this car and they could be anywhere right now. But Missy's mom waited up for her daughter all night and when she didn't arrive in the morning, the first thing she did was file a missing persons report. This was so unlike Missy to not be in contact with anyone all night. And the story Laura had told Missy's mom wasn't very comforting at all and she knew something was wrong. And unfortunately, Missy's mother was right. On the 4th of October, Missy's body was found. Her body was found face down in a stream in Angeles National Park. Her hair had been chopped off and there was a four foot log resting on her body. An autopsy was carried out on Missy's body and it found that she had drowned in just eight inches of water, which is literally like this big. And as you can imagine, Missy's family were distraught and they wanted to know what the hell happened to their daughter. And so did police, but all they had to go off was Laura's version of events. The same one she told to Missy's mother that night. And whilst this investigation was going on, Laura and Karen were really involved in the investigation. They grew extremely close to Missy's family, especially Karen. She was the closest. I mean, she attended Missy's funeral with Laura. She had newspaper clippings and pictures of Missy dotted around her room. Karen even moved in so she could console Missy's mom and become a surrogate daughter. She would visit Missy's grave several times a week and even told Missy's mom Irene that she'd seen Missy's ghost. The case unfortunately grew cold after around two years. The police couldn't find any new leads on these three boys and their Camaro and there was nothing else for them to look into. That was until 1988. A girl called Eva went to the police station with crucial information that the police so desperately needed. She told police that she was also present on the night of Missy's disappearance, along with Laura and Missy. And her statement completely flipped the script to what they believed for the last three years. Eva admitted that on the night of Missy's disappearance, when Laura went to pick her up in the car, she was being closely followed by another car but Laura knew this and in the second car was Eva and Karen but like I said Laura knew this and they'd all schemed this up between them and it's not known whether Missy knew that they were being followed by Karen and Eva or whether she was being deceived but Missy gets into Laura's car and they drive to the park followed by Karen and Eva and when they arrive at the park Laura, Missy and Karen get out of the car but Eva decides to stay put and she watches the three of them walk into the woods together and from here the version of events is told by Karen. So they were walking in the park, the three of them, and Missy decides that she doesn't want to walk anymore and decides to sit on a log. And apparently they were yelling at her about her sleeping around with other people's boyfriends. And when Missy sat down on this log, they started chopping Missy's hair off and of course, Missy was like, what the hell are you doing? And started screaming. Laura asked Missy to get into the water with her. And of course, Missy said no, she didn't want to. Laura was persistent. And when Missy said no again, Karen pushed her into the creek. And once Missy was pushed in there, Laura wasted no time in tying Missy's hands behind her back and placing her face down into the water, drowning her. And after a while, Laura pulls Missy's head back out of the water, and this is where Karen said that she locked eyes with Missy, her so-called best friend that she is watching being drowned. And instead of realizing that she had taken it way too far, she got a four foot, 100 pound log, which is around seven stone, and placed it on Missy's back to hold her down. And just think if that was you and your best friend in that situation, I would give my life to save my best friend. I would never go and get a log and ensure that my best friend is going to drown. And with Eva and Karen's statement combined, in March 1990, Karen and Laura 
were convicted of second degree murder. And they were both sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. And in 2011, Karen was released. And the following year, so was Laura, after they both served around 23 years. And let me know your opinions on this. So since leaving prison, Karen has become an advocate for anti-bullying. She's been going around giving talks. She's released a book. She even had an interview on Dr. Phil and so many others. And even signed a deal to have a film produced of the murder she committed. She is making money off the murder she committed of her best friend. In my opinion, is so, so wrong. That should not be allowed. And rightly so, Missy's family sued Karen, seeking the profits that she is making off their daughter's murder. And amazingly, they even got a law passed called Missy's Law. And this is so companies or whoever is helping the criminal publish their work on their story or the victim has to contact the victim's family first for their approval. And I think it's amazing that they were able to do this because it's so morally and ethically wrong to be able to make money off a murder you committed. But yeah, that's everything I have on this case. Oh, I forgot to say, which I was meant to say right at the very start, that I didn't post last week. Um, so there's two videos coming this week. And then I did do a vote and people voted for me to post twice a week. So I'm going to try my hardest to do that, but with a full-time job and life, it's quite hard to get the research in. But I'll do my best. And yes, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and watch some of my other videos. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.